good morning monday morning everybody you have uh, continued where i left off last week let us show you so yeah put tire on this one this is a spare one and then i came home last night and ended up getting a tire a hook screw sorry and this one here as well right bloody there uh, so i've got to go and get that replaced today before i even start anything right little walk later down to the garage drop the car off that's them out of way for two new tires um that's a little bit exercise done this morning <laughs> right i'm gonna get the stuff out for this because i want to get this done first straight away i'm gonna get the the new um pipe out fit the new pipe measure it get it cut put the hoops on put the beams across get the cover on job's done that's the plan anyways Right, so here's the pipe that I've got. As you can see, it's a lot thinner. It's actually thinner than what I thought it was. This is actually 25 mil, not 36. But it'll do the job anyways, unless I decide to put the old stuff back on. But uh, let's see what what it looks like when I've got the hoops on. Because like I say, it's only going to be holding uh, the grey mesh anyways. that's them pipe works all done so very straightforward this is just for a brass cage basically and um, so i don't know whether or not i'm going to need to put any side struts on uh just with a bean it shouldn't really make a difference to be honest because it's just that mesh that's going over the top uh, i'm going to go and do a bit of de-weeding down the back uh, just before i do get the cover to put over the top to see if it's big enough it should be but we'll see but uh, it's dead straightforward to build these um they say for, for a brass cat cage, uh, for a polyton you need a little bit more uh, sturdiness and strength which is the reason as to why I've got this one here with the thicker pipe, um, the lats going on the inside uh, and like I say, that is not moving very much at all um, so that'll be spot on for when it comes to putting the plastic on and I'm going to be building another one of them next door to it as well which uh, I'm going to get the bits and pieces for it a little bit later on but with this, I'm going to, like I say, de-weed around the back and then put the cover on the top Right, the weeds have been taken care of at the back there. Stung my hands all over, <laughs> but never mind. I'm going to put some weed clad down there, down the back, just to tame that, and also down the side there. I already did give it a spray the other day, and I can't say it has made a difference, but I just want to get right down to the base as well. Uh, I've dug a lot of the weeds up as well, and what I've done is, instead of wasting the nettles, I've put them into this barrel here, because I can fill it with water and make some nettle tea. Now, that's great for cabbages, brassicas, stuff like anything leafy. So, uh handy tip for you so i'm gonna get uh, this cover see if it uh, that cover is right down there to see if it goes over this one i do believe it will uh, and then i'll need to think about how i'm gonna get this on because ideally i need a staple gun So the cover is partly on. I've got it uh, cable tied in sections here. Now I know there's some gaps here. I did try, I just been asked a couple of people to see if any staple guns and they don't. So I'm gonna have to, cause I'm gonna staple it to the inside, just at the bottom there. But in the meantime, what I'm gonna have to do is do what I did the previous, previously and just put a couple of screws in, just hook it over just to keep it down. Um, and then I've got to find a section for the front here because it wasn't quite long enough. So it shouldn't be too bad, to be honest, by the time I find because I will have some little niggly bits of rot knocking around. So uh, I'm just going to quickly screw, so put a couple of holes in and I'll show you the finished product. That's the cover all put on, where the, the bit that I joined together anyways. Uh, I'm going to run some like string or something along the side just to keep that little bit taut up a little bit more. Um, 
but other than that only the section i've got to sort out now is this front section here a little bit top section that section there and then sort out the bottom bit there as well and then that's this tunnel all done um i feel the wind already the wind's just coming straight through here so like i say it shouldn't be too bad and i think it's going to be fantastic for the uh, for the cabbages and stuff but i will have to like, tape up these sections or patch them in uh, for the holes because the last thing i want is any butterflies getting in or anything like that i've spotted two sections there's one in that section down there there's a little hole down there and obviously there's a big hole there as well but i'll sort them out once i've done the front bit there's a little bit there as well i'll have to sort all these little bits out well work stopped i've uh, managed to get this bit sorted out here so i'm getting that bit done i need to get the front section done but i've got a visitor dangerous brian's on the plot <laughs> gary from I'm stealing the safe bit <laughs> it's high stay away um he's popped down the uh, because he was passing so i'm gonna have a chin wag and uh, i'm gonna get this sorted the front bit done because it kind of just stop <laughs> Thanks very much for help, Gary. That's that sorted out. So uh, I've got a, little, a few little holes. I'll fix them with a bit of uh, that stuff. <laughs> but inside here, all covered, all sorted. I'm getting wet. It's letting the water in. Let's the wet, uh, air in as well, obviously. Hopefully it doesn't let the, the bloody butterflies in. But that's one tunnel complete. This bed's all dug over. I'm motivated. I just need to get this side done. The rain started just coming down there, so I'm going to hide and do some inside jobs. So I've made a start here, I've brought four of the pipes over. I need to knock them out of the ground. It's going to be the same size tunnel as this one. I'm making another path here. So I've got double spacing, like I did have with the other side. Not just so I can get myself through. Just a nice little storage area as well, if need be. So I've got two of them, and I've got half one as well to put in. I need to level all this off. Which is what I'm doing at the minute. There we have the second path in. I've just uh, stuck some bricks to the bottom here. Just because I didn't have a bit that size. And I didn't have a thing anything to cut it with. So uh, I've got that size in there. Just need to mark out where these are going. And then dig down. And then knock them in. That's saved. Uh, that that's, rain has now stopped play. It's now raining hillstone in again. And I've dropped the car off at the garage, <laughs> thinking it was going to be ready by the time that this rain, before this rain came in, and it wasn't. So I'm now going to have to walk up to the garage in this rain, see if the car's ready. If it's not ready, I have to walk and get Elizabeth from school and head home. I'm going to get a little bit wet. <laughs> I'm signing up for the day. I'll catch you next time. Good morning things seem to be changing the looks changing it's glorious sunshine forecast and it is lovely and sunny today at the moment this morning it is forecast heavy showers this afternoon so there's one job in my mind i want to get done today and that's the polytunnel cover i've just got granddad down here as well so we're going to get stuff ready sorted and get this polytunnel cover put on got everything prepared here so we're going to pop this tunnel cover onto this tunnel Get it all pulled in get it tight we're going to start by doing the sides because it's just one continuous piece all the way over the top there so i'm going to do one side either this side or the other side get that uh, clamp look at that screwed in basically and then take it obviously over the top and uh, clamp the other side until we get the right until we get it right basically then once i'm happy pull it tight then screw it into place in sections um, so I'm just waiting for Grandma Dave to come around now and we'll get this uh, put on and we'll check the length of this polythone cover
that's the tunnel cover put on. I have just been pottering on and finishing off the little touches. Um, I'll show you the tunnel now. I've pretty much finished it now. I just need to put the door on. So let us show you what, it, what I've managed to sort out with my main gwan has done. There we go. One com partly, 95% 90, completed tunnel. So it's all been put on. The sides have been put on. I've pulled them down. Um, I've tidied this section up on the inside of the door frame here as well with a couple of extra bits. I've just got a um, fence panel there. It's just what I had. I can get this painted, not a problem. And uh, I've put that big long lat across the top because that's going to be my runner for the door because the door's going to go slide across there that way. And I'm going to see if I can make a door out of that uh, CLS. At the back here, I've put some bits on the outside there and outside of there, on the, on the outside. Um, I've put this cover on because the rain was just flying through this way and onto the tops of the leaks and stuff that was in this section. So I've put that back up and I've also put the mesh cover on here as well for the bugs. Not that it's stopped like, cause look at this. It's absolutely craziness. Look at all the little bugs up there. <laughs> as, soon as, as soon as I got the cover on, they were just, uh, I think it's a yellow pipe to be honest, but never mind. But aye, this tunnel is now pretty much complete. I just need to get tidied up in here and get sorted out. There's lots of plastic, lots of spare. I should never have worried about um, the plastic, but let's have a look from outside. There we go. And like I've mentioned on the previous time, I've just left about two, two or three inches of overhang there. Just because obviously when it gets cold, this is going to go tighter. That's good. That's kind of that. No more stitch in the middle. <laughs> And like I say, I did measure it spot on. The width was the length and the length, length, length was the width. And you can see them boards on the back there as well. In the back there as well. So this is on nice and tight to be not not done again for oh, as long as that can, basically. I need to keep, that, keep, uh, keep looking after it. But it's a nice sight, nice and taut. So here we have one giant cabbage tunnel, netted tunnel, one poly tunnel. And I've got a start of another polytunnel coming on this side here as well. So tomorrow's task will be to get these pipes dug and put in, in place, ready for the pipe work to come. Um, and uh, here, I am just going to go tomorrow. Even if I get the tunnel finished, I'll just go tomorrow and anything anyways. But I've got some plants to bring in, and I'm going to bring the plants in and put them into here. I've got some giant cabbage, some giant red cabbage, and some giant swede, and I'll show you what they look like at the minute. What well, I've got here, and I've got my giant swede. I say I'll be putting giant swede on this side. I'll have to work out when I get uh, when I get everything brought down here. So I've got giant swede here, and I've got uh, five giant red cabbage here as well. And then I've got the two brigadier. That's in the middle polytunnel, which I need to plant as well. So uh, that's pretty much this side filled. These five giant cabbages will be going on this side. And I'll just put all five of them in and just see, see what we can get out of them. Um, giant Swede obviously will go on this side with the couple of Brigadier at the bottom. But that's a planting session possibly for tomorrow. We'll have to wait and see. The Red Giant Cabbage is not quite ready to be planted out yet. Neither is that side ready to go neither. So uh, I might get this side planted tomorrow. We'll see what happens. That's me done. I'm going to go home for a cup of coffee and some bite to eat. And then uh, go get the kids. And I've got a few things to do at home, uh, which I'll tell you about when I get there. Well, I didn't get a chance to get in the shed yesterday, but I did get some other news. Um, the news was that me pipe has arrived. <laughs> so I'm going to have Dave's at the minute because he's had to cut it to ground as I'm walking across. Um, to be honest, it is It's not too heavy. I probably could have walked it over. Let me show that. I probably could have walked it over just like that and cut it at the garden. Nah, I'm going to cut it now and I'll just walk it over on pieces. <laughs> so 25 meter roll. I need 6.25 meter pieces uh, so there should be four of them in total and then uh, that should be in the right size for the hoops right we've brought that blue plastic pipe down it's down there i'm just recording right now we're getting all the pipes sorted out we're getting the big sledgehammer we've got the main we've got the uh, knocking in um template i'm going to dig down the side it's going to be the same width as this tunnel same length as this tunnel as i can see you've got them all marked out there in different sections so we're going to get them done bit by bit and i'm going to get you put up in the template and uh, the time lapse
Yeah. I'll cut it again. Right, that's them um, pipes all in leveled off. I'd extra pair of hands with Brian there. Thanks, Brian. Brian, I did all the hard work because he wouldn't let us join in, but I managed to get the last two bits in. I knew he had something to say. Right, going to get these pipes put on and pushed over and left in the sun in the cold so that the flex and the um, they stay rigid. So, uh, and then I'm just waiting for a new set of pipes to come. Um, some some lap buttons, should I say? So I've got some better buttons. So we're going to quickly get these put on because I need to get back home. So I had to quickly nick back home to get uh, the mother-in-law's dinner. Um, Leslie's going to take that over for her. We managed to get the first pipe put on. Um, my granddad's had to pop over back home, so I'm going to have to try and just persevere and uh, try and get these other hoops on. I've got a rough idea what I'm going to do. I'll show you what uh, what I'm doing to get them knocked down, basically. Now it's very difficult when it comes to these pipes to knock them down. That's because the curvature of the pipe, it's basically, it's curving in over. So what I'm doing is I put one side on so I can keep it straight as possible. I've put a bit of WD-40 on for some lubricant on the inside of the pipe. And then what I've done is I've drilled a hole long enough to get a metal rod through. And then I'm pushing it down, wriggling it around as hard as I can. And then I'm using a hammer and knocking it down as far as I can. Now, this height is going to be... Uh, um, the height for this is basically... Can I touch it? Which I can. Just exactly the same as what I did with this one. Can I touch it? Yep, I can touch it. So that gives me the, uh, the idea of the size that I need. That's probably a little bit higher. Probably not. I'll try not that down a bit more, which I will on this side now. Then I'm going to get them ones put in. But they should all be flush, should all be straight. With the back there, so that should all be straight. And that should all be straight on that side. I've sort of eyeballed it and taped it and went off this side as well. Well, that was a lot easier than what I thought it was going to be. I did miscalculate the end pipes, like. Um, I think I must have cut them wrong at my granddad's, but nevertheless, it doesn't really matter the length of the pipe because you're going to have, you can have excess to put over the top of the pipes in any case. Now, I've just put that long lat across the top there just to see if I can get a level. And now everything's touching across the top. Top pipes there, top, everything's nice and flush. And check this out for the level. Tell you what. That's not, that's not too far off that. You should be able to see that there. Not too bad being right in the middle. So that tells me that that's straight enough for me. Like, by the time I get my battens across the top on the inside, but that's a job done. Fantastic. I've got a few bits to tidy up in the back here. Yeah? So the plastic at the back, just the inside of that window. Uh, I'm going to get the staple gun. And I'm just going to staple that, just to tighten it in around these corners. I don't really need to do it, but I'm going to do it anyways. That's if I can get in. <laughs> right, I need to make some space in here. As you can see, it's an absolute pigsty. So I'm going to get all of the onions moved and put them in the onion house. I need to get the onion house bed prepared first, though. I'm going to get this side done first. I need to get rid of the stuff from that side. I'll just pop it on that side. And then I'm going to dig it very quickly. And then I'm going to bring the rotavator down and just give it a quick tilling over. So it uh, shouldn't take too long, but I want 10 onions on this side. I'm going to set the uh, set the buckets out as well, and I'll see if I can get my uh, black white plastic down ready to go as well.
Boo! <laughs> no, um, so that's the onions all um, brought in here uh, for the, well that's all onions I've got to be honest. Uh, I've got another three to bring in, but other than that, I've just seen that all of these onions are absolutely riddled with thrip. So I best get me spray back on. Uh, I've got some dynamite already down here, so I'm going to mix a little batch up and I'm going to give these another spray now. And I'm going to spray these every other day now to get rid of the thrip. So, uh, yeah, that's another job sort of done. I need to um, cover with the white and black my plastic, which I'll have to do next time I'm down. But that's the layout of where I'm going to be having them. The big pots represent where the onions will be going on this side, and I'll put some on this side as well. But for me, today, I'm going to throw a spray of these, and I'm going to head back down home and do the jobs I said I was going to do yesterday. Pot on the marrows, pot up uh, to sow some marrows as well, and uh, do a little bit more potting up. So I'll see you back at home. Back at home now, and as you can see, I've got an absolute handful of some cracking seeds. So I'm going to get into the greenhouse and I'm going to get these sown. So first things first, I'm going to get these two marrows potted up. Now these are from the uh, Lee Herriton Sea Batch and they've absolutely flown up. So I'm going to get them put into a couple of 11 centimetre pots here and uh, I'm going to do this very quickly. Right, so excuse the hands, I've got latex gloves on. I had a bit of an incident with this finger here. Um, I caught it with a Stanley knife, uh, so I've had to bandage it and obviously for clean cleansing purposes, wearing my gloves. Um, so these are the marrows that I've decided to choose from. So I've got some fantastic marrows to, to choose. Uh, I've got these ones over here as well. Uh, that's 52.9 kilo, um, 53.6 kilo, uh, it's 125 pounds. Uh, 123.5 pounds i don't know what this one was um and also got some more um bags marrow as well 156 i think this one come from but what i'm going to do is i'm going to save them for next time round and i'm just going to put these in because i don't want to put them all in obviously so i've got these are my choices here as well as lee herons so i'm going to pop these into one of these and then uh i'm going to get one each and i'm going to mark them all up here and i'm going to do it very quickly and there we have a little bit of time later these are all the giant marrows for 2021 so as you can see here i've got the uk record holder 200.6 pounds i've seen that in malvin back in 2020 uh so sorry 2019 um we've got these are all from mark bags so thanks again mark and mel for these seeds um much appreciated so we've got several different varieties here different from different uh, marrows uh two of each and we'll see how they come up this one uh was off uh, lee herriton so they are coming up and they look fantastic leaf size is fantastic as well this has actually come away uh i don't pull these off i leave them on the seed heads leave them on and let the plant take it off itself but that's just getting a little drink there and i want to take them back inside so i'm going to put these in the propagator i've also I've also been sowing some long runner beans as well here. So this one was from Paz Doyle, Yard Long Bean, Long Runner Bean. Don't know the size of where it came from. Um, and this one here was a 50 plus 50 centimetre um, from 20, uh, from 2020 and 61 centimetre from the parent beforehand uh, 2019. So that's still a fair size bean. So I've got two of them here and here. I'm going to leave these in the greenhouse just to let them get by. As you can see here, we've got some uh, petunias and we've got some other things going on here as well. Now, petunias, these easy wave. I got these from somewhere else and I've just realised I've actually got um, another delivery today of petunias, uh, which were, in fact, I think they were the same ones. I'll have to double check. Um, but, but I got a, a, a delivery today of petunias, which I wasn't expecting, to be honest. But as you can see here, we've got some petunias in here as well, which... Oh, flying now i need to get them into the beds so i'll have to get them into the raised uh, the the beds on the shed wall as soon as possible so i've got these are all doing all right got busy lizzies here all of these busy lizzies all these plants have just been left in the greenhouse i would love to be able to keep them inside get them nice and warm but uh space as you can see takes up a lot of space here and i've taken a lot of things out of here um for a dump of the garden the sunflowers are doing fantastic still just in the greenhouse here they're looking absolutely tip top which i'm pleased with them so i've got a few sunflowers to play with this year as well well i'm going to be going in the house the house now having a bath getting sorted i have work tomorrow so it's been a uh, lovely two weeks off but uh, back to real world so i'm working thursday friday saturday 
then I'm back up again Sunday and Monday. We've got a little hospital appointment on Monday for Sky and Afit. Uh, those who have long followed the channel for a while, um, Sky uh, was born with a condition called flat feet, uh, whereas the arches and our, our feet were never um, never formed. So basically, our foot is flat and our knees bend in over as well, which can cause long uh, implications in the long run. We've been dealing with it for the past 10 years now, seven to six, between uh, eight and 10 years. She did have surgery on her feet a couple of years back and she had to have surgery last year to have the screws removed. Um, we're discussing the next options basically, but uh, I'll let you know what's happening with that. Um, but other than that, I'm they say going for a bath and I'll see you when I see you. <laughs> I've had a productive week so far. I'm pleased with all the stuff I've managed to get done. Well, I do have to apologise. Uh, I kind of lied to you all. Uh, I was going in, but then um, I seen a job, I did it. I seen another job, I did it. I seen another job, I did it. So let me show you what I've done. So I was in desperate spa need of space. The propagators were full. The things needed potted on, I needed to get rid of a few things, so I decided to put the T5 up. Now the T5 at the back here was missing a bulb. As you can see, it's not really straight neither. I think it's bent, the whole thing, unit's bent, but I've put it up. I've got the water and tray from outside. I've put the tomatoes, them uh, money makers, and them money makers, these are Gardener's Delight, under here, so they're out of the propagator, so I can fill the propagator up. Um, I've put my loofahs under this C5 as well. I've getting the, the automated switch there for the light, so I need to rename that on my phone, which I'll do in a second. So I've got the excess at the back on the back bench. And it was also, I could get four, sorry, so I can get the marrows all popped into the propagator here. So one thing led to another. So I've got the, marrow, uh, the, the marrows all popped in there. I've got the runner beans in here. Uh, I've just filled some space up here with the golden tomatoes. They need to be potted up next. These are my giant marrows, as well, uh, giant tomato as well. That needs to be potted up next. I've potted up the red giant ricotta chilies. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six of those, and I've grown them before. I've got four mini yellow chilies, ricotta chilies here. One, two, three, four. These are all still five sunflowers uh, off Lee Herriton. And I've got the mini mums to pot up actually. So I've got them to do next. So that's dead. I can pick through all the ones that aren't going to root. Um, I'm just looking at that one, it's not going to root. So all the dead matter here, I'll just I'll take them out because they're not going to go. And because you can see the ones which have definitely. So any of these that's not taken will be getting removed. I'll do that afterwards, anyways. But you can see if I pull on this, you can just see there it's going to hold. So it's got roots on the bottom. So that's my next task. I'm not going to do it tonight. Promise, I'm gonna do that on my lunch break uh, over the next few days. So I've uh, moved the things, few things around in here. I can get the top on here if I wanted to. In here, I've got the poblano chilies for the um, my family garden chili challenge. These were neglected and they were pot bound, and that's the reasons why they don't look so clever. So I've got four poblano there, potted into twelve centimeter pots. I've got three long chilies here, which is not looking too clever, but that's not a problem because I've got some on the back up here. Put some there that's backed up. Um, I've also got uh, Joe's long at the back and then back as well, but like I said, they were already in there. On this side, I've got the habaneros that I got of Craig Orchard, I've got the sweet peppers there as well, orange ones. Um, I think they're orange ones uh, at the back there. I've got my bags, heavy cucumber here, another one here, and uh, these all three bags, heavy cucumbers, these are Barrett's long cucumber, uh, my two uh, heavy tomatoes. Um, I've got another cucumber down there. I've potted these uh, Nag Naga Fire chilies up. I've uh, also brought the Joe's Long and also the Spag chilies into this section here, so the heat's in here. So that's much more organized, much better sorted. They're sorted, and when I get the tomatoes all sold or get rid of, that's a spare bench then as well when I can when I do potting up. I've got this section sorted with all my marrows and I've getting this all organised. So everything now has its place, has its home, has its own propagator. Everything is now sorted. I am going inside and having a drink in a bath. But I'm pleased I'm getting that up and that's all I've done as well. well as I mentioned before, this T5, um, and very good T5, it's eight foot, uh, eight tube, four foot by uh, two foot. It only had uh, seven tubes. Um, that were working, so I've had to rob Peter to pay Paul 
and the other two that I've got here, I've had to take a light out of the bulb out of here um, that I'm not using. So, but it's up and it's working, and I need to sort out that um, automatic switch, which I'll do with my phone. Yeah, well, I was, like I say, I was in the mood, I was in the fettle, so I just cracked on and got it done. Um, so, I'm pleased I've got all that done. It's now done. I'm kicking stuff up away now because I've got no, no room to manoeuvre. I need to sort that out now before I go back inside. But for me this evening, take care and I'll see you over the next few days. Good evening. It's been a few days. It's now Saturday evening. It's 7 o'clock. I've just finished work. And me and little Kyle are starting to make a, making a start on the flower wall on the side of the shed. Oh, my Kyle. You're doing it by your quick, aren't you? So I've got some petunias here, which we're just putting in. How many we're putting in? We oh, have 24 plants, and how many per per pot we're putting in? Six. No, we're putting four in. It was four times by six. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we're going to get these put in. I've got some more plants to put in for the trailing, um, and I've got some begonias and stuff, which I'm going to be popping into here as well. I've still got some begonias from last year, so we're going to have a lovely, beautiful wall of flowers across here. And um, Kyle's going to help us. And guys, can I tell you answer a math question? No. So, uh, 24 divided into 6 is 4. Yeah, that's right, because we had to work out, because how many plants have we got here? 24. We've got 24, so I'll give them a little maths preview to do. Many. So we need boxes. 4 plants per box. And, Mom, and Dad, how many boxes? We've got 2, we've got 6. That's the reason why we did the maths equation. Right, we're going to get cracked on and get this done. So, we've made a bit of a good start with that. So there's 4, um, there's four petunia in each pot. I've got some uh, begonia non-stop mix. I've already got some plants in the shed there, in the greenhouse, sorry. Uh, the same size, same ones as well. I'm waiting for my apricot uh, shade begonias coming, but I'm going to pop these into, two of these in each one, and uh, then I'll wait for the rest of the plants to come. I fed the, because there's old compost in here, I've put some uh, blood fish and bone in just to give it a bit of a boost. Right, that's that done. I just need to give it a good drink and good water. Let's like see, I'm waiting for these plants to develop and then I can pop them in as well. We'll have a beautiful display on that wall this year. I'm going to overpack them and see what we get out of them. Um, I'm moving on to chilies because I've got some chilies ready to pot up. These are Joe's long chilli. I'm going to pot 20 up into here because I've got some more to pot up as well just to try and save a bit of space really. Uh, so I'm going to pot them up into here and then I'm going to pot the rest into these pots as well just to and get some space and either going to be left into the in the cold greenhouse um and just because i don't have any space basically right that's all the chilies potted up with the pots that i've managed to get a hold of so we've got um absolutely tons <laughs> 20 in there there's 12 18 there, there's 20 so there's 40 there's 40 there and there's 10 there so there's 50 joe's long chilies there not only have i got those ones i've got the ones in the shed as well uh, which i'll show you how far they are on. but these are going to be kept in the cold climate uh, the outside in the cold greenhouse and uh, we'll just let them to see how they get on right let's go have a look in the greenhouse actually before i take you into the greenhouse i'll show you leslie's lilies she's been keeping an eye on these um very closely and she's got some that are actually budding now as well this is double delight this is going to look lovely it's a red and yellow one when it opens up and she's got a few uh few coming on as well there's another there's another one coming onto there as well i don't I can't remember what that's called uh, that is blackjack so she, uh, she's kept these lovely and pristine. She's been feeding them. She's been um, using uh, moonshine on here as well. And also some, uh, sorry, not moonshine. She's been using the uh, sprays to keep the, tear the bugs off. Um, and she's doing a really good job with them, considering these are on the pots for the second year. She'll be taking these down to our allotment um, and putting them in a tunnel, I suppose, uh, when she gets a chance to do so. Um, I've got a couple of dahlias in the back of here, Kenora Challenger. And also I've got, uh, oh, just one. Oh, I don't know, the signs come off. But we'll see what it is when it opens up anyways. Um, I've had these a couple of years now. Uh, I got these off Rob Reed, so they're doing well. I should have really had them onto the propagators back in March. Um, been meeting to do it for the last couple of years, but nevertheless. Um, they're coming up lovely though. They'll stay in the greenhouse here and we'll get a nice flower off them early on. Right, into the shed. Yeah, seriously, need to get all of these tomatoes out of here. Like. <laughs> but uh, as for the chilies, these are the spag spag uh, chili so these are the long ones and they're doing fantastic since i put them up they're looking lovely and clean like i said i've been uh, spraying these with uh, some moonshine and also some provado that's what leslie's been using for a green fly as well on the roses so these are all looking lovely these are the other joe's long so you can see the difference in the size at the minute what else have i got in the corner here uh there so i'll put them down 
no, 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 move, yeah. Move These are the sweet peppers at our Craig Orchard. Oh, they're just looking, everything's looking lovely and green. Fantastic. Bags chilies are coming along fantastic, the heavy chilies. Um, these mini mums are doing well as well, the two that I got potted up. I've just potted these giant tomatoes up here today. Um, these are the Deutsche Record Mega Zach tomatoes. So I've got two in here, this little one here and this bigger one. Normally if I had enough tomatoes I would normally just get rid of that one, but I don't have a great deal. So uh, yeah, that's all lovely and warm and that's kept in there. On this side, I've got all of these to pot up next, the mini mums, the red mini mums. I need to find some pots and get them done because they can go in the cold uh, climate now. Um, the long yard runner beans, as you can see there, starting to come up. Just move that across there, you can see it's starting to push through there. Uh, nothing yet on the other marrows that I saw the other day, on the uh, 12th, so there's nothing on there yet. I mean, it is only the 15th, it's been three days, but Lee Herriton's uh, marrows are flying there now. I'll have to get them moved out of the way. Uh, all the red ricottos are coming up lovely, as are the mini yellow ricottos as well. So everything's looking fantastic in here. I've got these to pot up, which I'll do now actually. These tomatoes, because uh, I've got space to put them in. So I'm going to get them potted up now. And just like that, camera magic, all eight done. I did have ten. I think it was ten in a packet, but I've gotten eight. So there's plenty there for me. These are the short tomatoes. They're just the little Goldwyn ones. They're from Medwins, um, the little yellow cherry tomatoes, um, which I bought especially for Granda, and he didn't put them in. So, stuff them, I've put them in. So if I've got, let's see if there's any shows, if I grow them now, we'll see what comes out of it anyways. So they're all done. That's me done for this evening. But let's just have a check here. Ah, totally didn't see that. Let's uh, get them mini mums out the back. Nice, right, pull them out the back there, the yellow ones, I believe, but uh, they're not ready, no way near ready yet. Uh, just in this one here, as you can see, I've still got some uh, Joe's Long at the back there. So some Joe's Long there. There's some spag chilies there to come up. Um, but everything else in here is looking fantastic. Right, okay. That's me done for this evening. There has been loads of work done in Leslie's allotment. Steve's been an absolute diamond. And he swore there. <laughs> uh, but oh, honestly, seriously, I'm going to go over tomorrow and I'll show you what it's like. It's a totally different garden. He's done a fantastic job tidying up and getting things sorted. He's got a decking area and all sorts sorted out. He's got it all done. Leslie's done a fantastic job this evening as well, and I'll show you what she's done with our block paving. But anyways, that's me for today. I'll see you tomorrow, and then I'll see you on there live on the evening. Morning, Sunday. Um, before I head over and show you Leslie's plot, I'm going to get a few more bits potted up here. Uh, I've got the mini mums to pot up, so I'm going to get all of them potted up into these little jetty cups, the little coffee cups. And then I'm going to wait for Leslie getting back because she's currently uh, down at her work at the minute. And then uh, she'll be coming back and we'll show you her garden. I've actually changed my mind in regards to the pots and I'm going to pot them in. I have started and I've done eight there already, the smaller ones, so they look absolutely tip top. Um, but if we look here, I've taken these out. Look at the roots, look at the roots on these. Look at that. Absolutely tons coming from there. And the bigger ones, as you can see, you've got a bigger root system. So if I put them into there, they're not going to really have much room to manoeuvre in there. So what I'm going to do is I want to pot them into these uh, these pots here. So a little bit more room to manoeuvre, and these are going to be kept into the cold greenhouse here. So I'm just going to swap them over. I've only got them. I've got them ones, and I've got them ones to do, which will take us five minutes to sort the do. But yeah, I'm just going to change them up. See if I'm going to pot them in there and pot them on again. A little time later, that's all of them potted up. Please, they made the right decision with that, potting them up into them bigger pots. They'll last a lot longer in there. Um, then they'll be ready to be potted out. The, I've got absolute tons. So there's plenty there. And I've also got some over here as well, another eight here. So they're all up and all ready to go. Chilies are all done from yesterday, as you remember. And I've already showed you everything else here as well. I've uh, just given the, brought these in here, thought I'd give them a drink in the tray. And then I'm going to take them out and put them back in the shed. But I uh, tell you what, these uh, sunflowers are flying, absolutely flying in the pots. You can see the roots starting to spread right out there as well. I'm not, I'd be surprised if there's anything at the bottom yet. Bloody Nora, look at that thing, it's huge. I'll have to pot these up again shortly. My goodness, I was not expecting that. I'll have to get them in the 10 litre bucket, I'll have to take them down to the allotment um, and get them put into the garden. Not in the garden, into the 10 litre bucket, down the garden. Well, I wasn't expecting that. See the roots at the bottom there? Right, I'm going to wait for Leslie to get back, and then I'll take you over to hers, and then we'll go down to my garden. I've got a visitor coming down this afternoon as well. 
Right down the plot, uh, I've actually tell a lie, I've been here for a little while now. Um, seen a job and did it. Uh, let's see, I had a visitor down. So, uh, chap will help us. He's helped us put uh, this door together. So, let us uh, spin you around and I'll show you. I'll get my camera stand out, anyways, because I kind of do six things at once. Right, so it's a slidey door, it's about what I wanted. I uh, didn't want one open in and out because I just haven't got the space. So, that's the reason why I wanted to come this way. So if I pull this open here, there we go, I can go in and out. So I want to shut it, I've still got to put the, um, the fabric on properly because I'll get the, the length of the lath that I've got spare. Just put it down the front and down the sides and stuff. But uh, that's all what it is. It's a slidey door. I think it took about, like I say, about an hour to get everything sorted and worked out. I will have to um, probably strengthen these chucks on the inside here because uh, they're a bit of thinner, thinner metal, uh, not metal, but uh, wood. But um, other than that, I'm pleased with it. I think it's tidy up the front and that's another job done. So this tunnel, once painted, is all finished. Uh, one of the best things about this door is this little catch here because it keeps it nice and tight. <laughs> right, time to head off to Leslie's Puff. Well, that one Leslie's plot here yeah, in the poly tunnel. She's been very busy. I don't know if I've showed you all of this. She's got onions in here. She's got uh, cucumbers and tomatoes and things put into here as well. Um, she's got a few canes in here, which um, I've got some hooks, hook and eyes, which we'll probably see if we can put some across here. I'll see if she wants to do that anyways. Uh, then uh, it's going to be a lot easier than just having these little canes up in any case. But the big changes have been happening on the outside. There we go, Steve has been very busy here. He's getting all of this uh, weed fabric laid down. So if we move further down here, also getting uh, all of this cleared, weeds dug over. There was a uh, load of patch down here of uh, grass and all sorts, he's dug that over. He's uh, dug this bed over, dug, he's dug all the beds over basically. Dug this bed over, made this bed, dug that one over. All the beds are all now built. He's even laid all of those uh, flags all properly as well. And Leslie's painted the outside with the framework in there as well. Looks nice and tidy. Yeah, he has been busy, like any. He's, he's been very busy. And Leslie, at the bottom corner there, these hexagonal paving slabs we got for free. And somebody gave her, a, um, a, what was it, a, the bag of sand the other night. And she just finished off the rest of it because half of it was already done, if you remember from previous. And then uh, she just finished all this, leading on to the um, little fairy garden for Elizabeth. And uh, she's managed to get herself a load of ornaments as well. Of course, here, there's a big bee there as well. A um, load of nice ornaments and everything on there as well, which is great. And you've got a little dog there, a little owl, frogs, frogs. Let's see, is that toad still there? Is the toad gone, is it? Well, but I tell you what, look at this, man. It's taking shape, something fantastic. So is next door. He's done a cracking job with next door as well. Um, well originally, the plan was going to be putting the, the free wood chip in the middle, yeah. But I didn't think we'll bother with a wood chip. I think I'll uh, spend a bit of money and uh, treat you to some, some purple slate or something like that. We'll see what the cost is for it to get delivered and stuff. But what a difference. What an absolute difference it's made in here. I bet you're buzzing with this, are you? Beautiful. Yep, we just need to get some uh, some further topsoil for this these beds to fill them back up again. And then she'll be laughing and she'll be able to get her roses and everything brought down here as well. Or more roses put in, should I say. And whatever else she wants to grow, all the rest of her flowers. But uh, for a week, I think it's taking them a week, is it? Two and a half weeks, including the polytunnel. This is all the effort that Steve's put into Leslie's garden. I'm absolutely flabbergasted. It's absolutely amazing. It's absolutely spot on. All the paths are sorted. All the bases are done. All the beds are all done. Beds just need painted. She's got herself a little, let's say, paving area there as well. She's painted all that sh uh, shed and everything. Just the two end bits to do, basically, that bit and that bit. But, aye, absolutely fantastic. Well, this is, uh, this is a new little summer area <laughs> for the sunshine. Um, but no, that's me all done for this week. Let's like say it's been a very, very busy week this week. Not just on my plot, but as you can see on Leslie's plot. Steve's done an absolutely fantastic job down here. And it's just finishing a lot of little things off 
Um, a few bits of painting here and there, which I'm sorry about the sort out. I'll be, I'll be easy enough sorted to get some weed because I brought down just to do the inside your paths down there and stuff like that as well. And we'll price up some um, some hardcore for the paths instead of using that uh, wood chip. instead of using the wood chip because the wood chip will just rot and it'll get back to square one like it was before. So uh, it'll be better using something else. But um, from us, like I say, I can't even remember what I've done this week. I've done that much. I think I've got all the tunnels sorted out at least, getting nearly ready all sorted. Um, I'm going to say goodbye and we'll see you all on Wednesday evening for the live. So take care. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And we'll see you all next week. Mm -hmm.